Welcome to Worship with the Lutheran Church of Our Savior. Welcome to our guests, our family, our friends, and our members, and, and everybody who's joined us together uh, to worship through the power of the Holy Spirit, together, distanced, but still the body of Christ, the church in the world. Special welcome to Bishop Suzanne Dillahunt, our Bishop of our Southern Ohio Synod, who is worshiping with us today virtually. Bishop Dillahunt, we're going to invite you to come in person one time, but we're happy to have you here now uh, through the gift of the Holy Spirit through the internet. All right, so let's begin our worship on this third Sunday in Lent with the Confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close to Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Join me now as we sing the gathering song, O God, Our Help in Ages Past.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's now time for the children's sermon, the kids' moments. So I'll meet you over on the stairs. I'm going to meet you this way, over here at the steps. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you again. Oh, I can't see you. Good for you to see me again. So, um, rules. Do you like to follow rules? Are there any rules that you really don't like? Are there any rules that you do like? We all have to follow rules. And good rules, good rules are the ones that are, 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 are meant to keep us safe. They're meant to keep me safe and you safe and other people safe. Like, um, oh, don't run when you're carrying scissors or anything sharp. Right? You're supposed to, the rule is you, you don't run with scissors, but you, 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 you walk slowly and you keep it down. You point the scissors down so that you don't get hurt and no one else gets hurt. Um, what are some other rules? Uh, no running in the house because you might trip and hurt something or hurt yourself or hurt somebody else. You know rules. Rules are supposed to be the, the things that keep us safe. So. You know about the rules in the Bible, right? Some of the most famous ones are the ones called the Ten Commandments. You've heard about the Ten Commandments? We could talk, spend a long time, and you're going to learn about the Ten Commandments uh, for the rest of your life, because they're, they're, they're good. They're, they're, they're good. They were a gift from God. God gave them uh, to Moses. Moses was someone that God chose to, uh, to give and he did a lot of things, Moses did. God gave him jobs and, and uh, hard jobs, and Moses did them. But also, Moses went up on the mountain and gave Moses ten rules, commandments, ten helpful uh, gifts called the Ten Commandments. So, so Moses went up. Moses went up. Here's Moses, my Moses action figure. Moses, and can you maybe you can't see too well. He's holding these. I'll take him out. He's uh, and, and God gave him these these rules, the Ten Commandments, on stone tablets, not tablet like a like uh, an iPad or something like that, but uh, a tablet like made out of stone. See, and wrote, and it's written on there. The, uh, the, the, the Ten Commandments. It's action figure Moses. Do, 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 He doesn't act very, very much. And then, the 
people were not following the rules. And Moses saw it and said, hey, and threw them, threw them down on the ground, and they broke. But then, Moses, then God gave Moses some more. And here's my other Moses. He talks. The Ten Commandments. Can you hear that? You shall have no other gods before me. Ooh. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. See, God is God. Don't make anything else God. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Oh, yeah. Don't use, uh, use God's name in a bad way. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Take care of yourselves. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Take care of your parents. You shall not murder. Ooh, that's easy one. Don't kill anybody. You shall not commit adultery. Uh, so when you're married, uh, just follow your promises to each other. You shall not steal. That's pretty easy. Don't you steal. You shall stuff. not give false testimony against your neighbor. Don't you lie shall not about people. Your neighbor's house. You shall Don't not get jealous and say, oh, I wish I had their house. Or maid servant, or his ox, or, or their or ox, or their ox, or their donkey, or their, or their Xbox. Or, or, or their bicycle, or... Exodus 20. These are presents from God to keep us safe, to keep our relationship with God safe, and to keep everyone else around us safe. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Thank you, God for the gifts, the Ten Commandments, the rules, the presence to keep us safe. Help us to follow your rules so that we can live and be safe and help other people to be safe and to live Thank you, God. Amen. Thanks for coming. I'll see you again next time. Bye. A reading from Exodus, the 20th chapter, beginning with verse 1. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But resteth the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, 
so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 beginning at verse 18. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human the word of the Lord. Gospel according to John, the second chapter. The Passover of the Jewish people was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Judeans then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Judeans then said, This temple's been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. The church is not a building. Do you think Jesus sang? He must have. At least when he was in the shower, everybody sings in the shower, right? 
The church is not a building. We're told in our gospel reading today from the Gospel of John that Jesus has joined the the hordes of people streaming into the city of Jerusalem. All the Jewish people coming in and squeezing into the city for the most important day of the year, the celebration of the Passover. And they were all coming. They were all coming in order to do their sacrifices, their sacrifices to God of uh, of animals. And uh, they were all in the temple, and Jesus comes along in the temple. The church is not a building. But what a building it was. The temple in Jerusalem. This was the second temple. The first temple had been destroyed by the, by, uh, by the Babylonians. Um, and uh, this was the second temple that had been rebuilt. And it was even bigger than the first one. And, then, and not only was it bigger, but they were continuing to expand it and improve it. It was under construction. When Jesus got there, with all these other uh, fellow Jews coming to, to celebrate the feast of the Passover, The church is not a building. But this temple was special. This temple, the first temple, uh, that was the place where the, in the temple, in the, they call it the Holy of Holies, the, the most holy place is where they kept the Ark of the Covenant, where it was said that inside this box was uh, were the tablets, the Ten Commandments that God had given to to Moses for the people. And uh, and inside this box were the commandments and the Ark of the Covenant and in this Holy Holy. This was the holiest place. This was the place where God lived. And even in the second temple, no 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 one knew what happened to that Ark, but in the second temple that Jesus is in, uh, They still had the Holy of Holies. They still said that this is the place where God lives. This is the place where God is most present to us. This is the, not just a sacred place, this is the sacred place, the temple in Jerusalem. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple, but the people came. They came, and we're told in John that Jesus comes too. And uh, we're told in all the Gospels this story, and sometimes it's been called the cleansing of the temple. Those words don't actually, sh- that word cleansing doesn't show up anywhere in, the, in any of the stories. But, um, but all four of the Gospels tell this story. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they make it very clear what the story is about. Because uh, in, in those stories, Jesus uh, calls the, um, the, the money changers uh, and those selling the, uh, the animals for, for profit. That, uh, he calls them a den of robbers. It was a den of robbers. He calls them robbers. They were exploiting the people and taking advantage of these very poor people who couldn't afford, and they were, and they were charging extra, and they were, they were, they were, they were uh, exchange rate for the coins. They were exploiting the people, taking advantage of them. But John does something very different, as John usually does. In the Gospel of John, this story happens much earlier. It's in a different place than in the other three Gospels. And here, Jesus doesn't call anyone robbers. There is no den of robbers. Here, Jesus says, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. Destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. And, and the, the, the leaders, the, the religious leaders, this temple's been under construction for 40 years. Actually, it's going to be under construction another 46 years after that before it, it also is destroyed. And will you raise it up in three days? Who do you think you are? But John tells us that Jesus was not talking about the building. He was talking about the temple of his body. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. 
By the time John is writing his gospel, this is much later than all the others, um, and writing decades after, see that in the year 70, the, the, after, as the, the Jewish, there were Jewish uh, revolutionaries. There was a revolution uh, rising up against the Jewish, the Roman Empire. The Roman, Romans, they crush it. There was a war, and they win easily, and they destroy Jerusalem, and especially they destroy the temple. And so, years after that, John is writing. He's writing to a people for whom the temple no longer exists. That place where God was most present to them, that place that was the most sacred, the most holy, they couldn't go there anymore. They didn't have it. Sound familiar at all? Not having your, your holy place, your building available to you to go and to experience the holy, to experience God? Sound familiar? The church is not a resting place. We've had to learn how to live without a building, a sanctuary during this pandemic. But we all know the church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place. We all know this because there's a song about it. Some of you know that in my last congregation, the previous congregation I served, was in the mountains right outside of Denver, Conifer, Colorado. And it was a fairly new church when I had arrived. Only been in official existence a couple of years. And it was worshiping in, in a building just kind of tucked away off the, road, off the main road. It was the uh, uh, community building for the uh, homeowners association in that area. And we realized that we needed to we weren't going to grow if we were going to stay there. And so we, we moved. We moved first into the town, the town, very small, the town of Conifer where the, the grocery store was, and there's a strip mall right there. And there was, in the strip mall, there was a, there was a community theater. So we, we moved our worship to the community theater. And then they needed it back for Sundays. And so we moved to a storefront. We were there for a couple of years. Moving to the storefront in a strip mall, right by the grocery store. Everyone could see us. We became so much more visible. But when we were worshiping in all these places, we weren't in a dedicated, sacred space. We weren't in a church building. We were in a multi-purpose space. We did our best to make it a holy, sacred place, to give that feeling where we could experience God. Uh, Linda made colorful banners. Uh, Tom built a table out of a, um, a, a, a tree, a, a log, a trunk of a tree. And that was great until we found the wood shavings all around on the carpet. And it turned out there were some insect critters inside that were eaten away, and so we had to get rid of that. We wore our albs and our stole and our chasuble. We sang the liturgy. We lifted up our voices, singing the hymns. We tried to make it as holy as possible, and we did. It was a holy time. We felt the spirit in our worship. And all the while, we were saying, the church is not a building. And while that's true, I was still missing something. Now, I'm Mr. I am Mr. The church is not a building. I am the reverend. The church is not a steeple or a resting place. The church is the people. But after a while, I really started to miss that dedicated, sacred space. And whenever I'd be uh, on vacation or out of town, I'd worship in a, in a sanctuary building set aside for worship, I was like, oh my gosh, I could breathe. I could, 
It's not that I didn't feel God. It was just that there was a holy experience there. It somehow, it was somehow different. It was set aside. It was sacred. First couple times that I worshipped here with you all at the Lutheran Church of Our Savior, I was I was well, I was nervous, of course. New place, new people. But I could I had a, I could breathe spiritually in a way I hadn't been able to in those multi. By the way, risen Lord Lutheran Church in Conifer, Colorado. After I, after I left, they did what was, what was the natural thing. They moved to the Episcopal Church just down the road, and they share space with the Episcopalians. And, uh, and it's exactly where they're supposed to be, and it's something that I, was, I envisioned and hoped that maybe one day we'd be able to get there, and, we, and, and they're there now. We're coming back into our church building, our sanctuary, very, very soon. And it's going to feel good. And it'll be interesting to see how it feels, though. Will it feel any different? You know, it's like after fasting. We've been fasting from this holy space, this sacred space. We've been fasting from it. And in the meantime, I'm hoping that we also began to recognize in ways we hadn't before that the holy is not just here. That we could experience God, the presence of God, in our homes as we worshipped. In in a parking lot, in a car, listening on the radio. As we delivered backpacks for the students at DECA. As we had Bible study together by Zoom as we prayed in other places. That God was there because we know the church is not a building. We know that God is present everywhere. So as we come back in, it'll be interesting to see, and I encourage us to keep in mind, uh, pay attention to what you're feeling and experiencing. And what kind of holy experience you're having. I found this very interesting. That uh, in our service, occasional services of our Evangelical Lutheran Worship, our hymnal, in the occasional services book, there's a liturgy for the dedication of a church building. And this is the prayer of dedication. Listen to these words. When you dedicate a church building, this is what we say. Let us give thanks for the body of Christ. For God's house of living stones. We give you thanks, O God, for you transcend the boundaries of space and time, yet you are willing to make your home in human hearts. We are the temple of your presence, and this building is the house of your church. Jesus says, that he is the temple, the temple of his body. And we know that we are the church, and, and we too are a temple because God is in us. God lives in us. So as we come here, which is going to be very soon, let's breathe in the holy always remembering that God's presence is beyond just the four walls of the church building. But we can experience God as expanded ways as Jesus is saying. So we come and we be renewed and, and filled with the Spirit, but not as a resting place, but as a people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. 
Uh, please join us now as we sing our hymn of the day, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty. Yes, we, I know, realize now that we should have sung uh, We Are the Church, but I wanted to sing a hymn that had the word temple in it. It was about the temple. The pickings are slim. But open now thy gates of beauty. As you sing it, uh, pay attention to the words and the expanded ways that, that it talks about God's presence, how we experience God. Temple, place, presence of God. Let these words dwell in you as you sing them. Open now thy gates of beauty. Amen. As we together confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rely on the promises of God. We pray boldly for the church, the world, 
and all in need. There is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church, that your people place their trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. Guide your church, that in every situation, your people's words and actions honor your name. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The heavens declare your glory. Renew your creation. Provide leaders the struggle for clean air and water. Protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems. Give all people the willingness to repent when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislatures, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering, especially Judith, Ron, Vicki, Joyce, Lynn, Jack, Brandon, Douglas, Terry, Simon and Sarah, Linnea, Lauren, Jackie and Jim, Jackson, the children and grandchildren of Betty, Joe, James, Sandy, Robert, and Tony, Lauren, Ken, Sandy and Joe, Roberta, Lou and Ken, Glenn, Emma, Kim, Grant, and for all who mourn, Betty, Marion, Dennis, Chris, Marty, Gary, Gwen, Jim, Janet, David. Defend victims of crime and bring repentance to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You call us to proclaim Christ crucified. Give clarity to this congregation and our leaders so that we might follow Christ beyond our town habits and comfort. Clear out anything in our common life that would obscure the gospel or that serves our own interests. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The cross of Christ is your power for all who are being saved. Thank you for Petula, Felicity, and all the martyrs whose witness reveals the power of the cross. Give us the same trust in life and in death. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us together pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another in our households uh, or through the Holy Spirit with the rest of the church. Peace be with you and also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
We are the church, whether we're inside a building or outside a building. As the church, we carry out God's mission in the world. Um, help us, through the Lutheran Church of our Savior, to carry out God's mission by uh, sending in, mailing in, or dropping off to our office uh, and offering. Thank you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The sending song is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Thank you.